Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How y'all doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well for even more links and I hope you enjoy this video. In this video, I want to talk to you about how to get some nice printouts to our GUI tab and how we're going to plan to, to have this work in the future. My idea is to have the whole screen full of the UI, or we can have half the screen full of the UI, but we have tabs for that half screen so that you can click on the buttons and it will change the tabs depending on what you want to see in that area. If you have a full screen, you'll pretty much uh, remove the gameplay area completely for the player so you can't play the game at the same time as watching the UI. So it depends a little what you want here. I would probably like half the screen. If you want to do whole the whole screen, you can comment. Uh, we'll see how we do that. It pr pretty much doesn't really matter that much in the end, as long as we have our GUI working. But let's get started with that. Now, I did a few changes before in the last video, if you know, and I showed you that uh, how we can access in the game state if we have our GUI open or not. There was one thing where when we're opening our GUI, we don't want to be able to update the view and we don't want to be able to update all that stuff. But maybe I regret that a little bit because that's not really how we want to play the game. Now, the idea is to let's go to update view here. Update. There we go. Let's see. Update view. Then the idea is to be able to play the game while the GUI is open. So I'm pro probably going to just remove this. But if you want to keep it that way, you can go ahead and do that. I know a lot of you code this game in your own way as well uh, and not 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 as I code it exactly. Then we have our update input as well. Now, of course, if you want to remove this, you can do it so you can move your player while playing or while having your GUI tabs open. So I'm sorry about that. It was just a little experiment if you want to do it that way. Let's try to run this a little quickly and see if it's working. So now our GUI is open and we can still move the player. And this is my idea to have half the screen like this. But let's get something printed out to this beautiful, beautiful area. Open your player GUI character tab.cpp. You'll see we already set up the font and all the character size and everything, all this kind of stuff. But we never actually set a string to this. And I want to be able to do that. So I'm going to open my H file here. Go ahead and in the private section, let's do a little void in it text like that. And we're going to initialize the character text. Let me do that. Have that open here. Boom. Very nice. We have our player sent in. Remember, we have our player sent in and our player GUI tabs dot H has a player already. Now, this is inherited from tab. Now let's open up tab.h and let's see that tab has a player reference as well. So anytime we create a tab, we give it a player reference and you'll see that we can access the entire player uh, from our tab itself, from any tab that inherits from tab. That's the structure we have. Let's go into our character tab again. Initialize the text right here. We have a text already. We have our info text here dot set string so you can do a set string here directly boom but we have to set a little string here so let me just set a string test and let's see that this is actually rendering in case we're not calling our render function here we're gonna have to use update as well to update that text so it doesn't seem like it's rendering right now of course you want to call your init text as well obviously that's not why, why it's not working once you call the init text i'm gonna put all this text stuff in there as well so we have some kind of structure here. So we're not just doing everything at one spot. We'll make a init background as well. But let's start off with this. Let's just see that we're getting the test. So it's saying test. That's great. One issue I'm having is that it's, it's transparent. And I know that might be something that you want. But I'm not sure if I want that. I want something that you can, you can clearly see. So it's more blackish. Let's do 20, 20. 20 here and let's do almost to 240 so it's very very dark you can barely see that it's transparent very dark we can put a texture on there as well if you want you know you have these old school games like diablo that have 
a texture on their UI. So it's not clean. It's more, it's more of a cool design to it. I'm not a good designer. So we'll see how we'll do about that. Most important thing is to get the text to initialize the text though. You can format a string in here if you want. That's one way to do it. Otherwise you can format it outside in the player already and you can put it in here. But I would like to, I would like to get that from player because it makes more sense to me. It just, you format a string for a certain purpose and you get it back. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to go to my player H and I'm going to look at the functions that I do have. I have a bunch of things here, accessors, all that stuff. I'm going to make a STD const STD string to string GUI to string character tab. It's going to be specific for that. It's going to be a nicely formatted string for that case. And the good thing about this is that once you get it, you can use it for that. You, you can change it in here easily and then it will change automatically in the character tab. You can choose to do this if you want. If you don't want to do it this way, you can do it any other way. Let me do a STD SS STD string stream SS. Now we're going to use a string stream for this. Why did I do that? There we go. We're going to use a string stream for this. And it's a lot easier to, to handle, I'd say. And I'm going to just return that string stream. Bec um, the reason I'm using this is because you don't have to do two string. You don't have to do all these different things. The string stream takes care of that automatically. It's a very fast way to format your strings the way you want them to. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, let me write something into here. So let's first say this. Uh, let's say, what do we have? We have a bunch of stuff. We have all kinds of, we have our attribute component. So let's just get the attribute component here first. And then we have a bunch of things we can print out a bunch of things we have. For example, let's just start off with some easy stuff. Let's say, uh, what do we have level? For example, level like that, like that. And we'll just do a new line here. Let's do level like that. And then we will keep it like this and duplicate this line. Now you can either duplicate it or you can keep going like that. I might just keep going like this experience, experience, experience. There we go, guys. Oof, look at that. Okay, amazing, amazing. And let's go ahead and, of course, give a this attribute component again. Here, what you can do is to make it easy for yourself. Let's do a uh, attribute component pointer AC, and you'll say this attribute attribute component and now since we're not always calling this this isn't that costly it's not that bad it will just make the name a little shorter so we can easily see what's going on okay and it's not this we don't have to use this either uh whoops what did i do okay let's go back here experience ac x exp like that new line let's make another one experience to next level Eh, exp next. There we go. We can just do exp here. Exp next. And then a thing like this. Let's do ac exp next. Good. And this should be enough for our testing right now. I'm not going to do anything off screen, guys, because I get a lot of hate for that. So I'm, never, I'm not going to do that in this series. Everything you're going to see is going to be on on recording so even all the tedious stuff i'm gonna do recording with you guys if you think it's very boring you can skip of course on to the next part but let's see if this is working now now we have a two string character tab go back to your character tab and let's set the string to this player dot now it's a reference so you're gonna use dot two string character tab and you're gonna receive a nice string which will be formatted in any way you want and you don't have to do a bunch of formatting manually. So you'll see your level exp, exp next. And this probably isn't going to update because we're just sending it once. Of course, you want this to update. And whenever you press C, it will go away. 
So it's a very nice, easy way to print out all your stuff. It doesn't look that good yet. We're gonna polish the hell out of this, so don't worry. I wanna make a nice texture for this and we're gonna, we're gonna make sure it looks nice. But let's go back to our character tab.cpp, change the character size a little bit because it's a little too big. Let's do half and let's set the color dynamically or not dynamically, but uh, manually. So set the color to not completely white, something off white like that and not fully opaque, but a little transparent. The position of the text is fine. Let's just fine tune this. So let me put a space or let me remove all the spaces actually. Boom. Let's run this one more time and make sure that it looks okay. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted to do. That's not at all the point of this. Uh, let's go back to character tab. Sorry guys, I don't know why that happened. Let me calculate it. What if I increase this to 100? How does that work? Let's see. Sorry, okay, fine, that looks better. I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna look into why that happened. Anyway, we have some printouts here. The next step is to update this. Go ahead and copy this line. This info text set string, copy that line. And we're gonna in our update, while it's not hidden, while the tab is not hidden, we're gonna update the character info. This will easily update for us. We'll run this and we'll see that whenever we get some EXP, it should update. I don't think I'm actually calling that now. Let's go ahead and make sure we call that in our gytabs.cpp. We'll see, go to the update here. You see, you're not actually, not ac actually updating it. So let me update this real nicely here, boom. And it's probably gonna want something update. Boom, okay, it doesn't want anything. Once you call the update, just make sure that in the player GUI, you're calling the update for the entire thing as well. Go down to your update function in the player GUI.cpp file and go to render player tabs. We have render player tabs. Let's see if we have update player tabs. We have update player tabs and it's updating. So we don't have an issue there. Now, if I run it, we should guaranteed have this Yes, so you see four, eight, we're getting EXP easily. It's, it's showing live, but of course, if we don't update it, it won't show. That's the beauty of it. So anytime we open it, we'll see stuff going on here. Now I know this doesn't look that nice. It doesn't look beautiful, but we will make sure that you can see what's going on. And we might even make the game area move a little to the right so you can still play the game while having your, your uh, GUI open. So hopefully as you play this, you will be able to level up and all that stuff. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? There we go, guys, a working GY. Now we just have to fill it out and we have to make it look good. We also want the other tabs. So the idea is now to go to your player GY tabs here and we're gonna make a button system here, just like we have in our game state. We're gonna have a button system, which will be able to update and, and maintain. And anytime you press the buttons, they'll probably be at the bottom or on the side, like a little, little tab library type thing. You can press the buttons to go to the different sections. I'm thinking the character tab will take care of leveling, leveling up the character, making it look nice and also just be very, very easy to work with. And then we'll have an inventory section. We'll have a quest section. I don't know how far we want to go with this game, guys. I'm not hundred percent sure myself, uh, but we'll see how we go as time goes on. But thank you so much for sticking with me. Hopefully you can print out some stuff and flesh this out as you want in your character tab and make more tabs. In the next video, we're going to add the buttons and make sure that they work and we'll go from there. So thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.